स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया last lecture of this particular module module on glass and ceramics and here we are little different from the earlier discussions where we had started with glass so why have i bunched it here as ceramics as under this particular section because as tiles we had discussed clay tiles as the roofing tiles when we discussed in clay and i found that this tile which is having a coating which is glassy in nature should be bunched in this particular module where you learn glass and the other difference between the other materials which you have studied and this material is that it is a finishing material it is not used for making wall or maybe making the roof or maybe making the floor but it is a kind of covering or a coating so it is a layer which will bring in aesthetics and obviously with various other qualities which one needs in a space so let us try to see what are here in store in this particular lecture yes obviously the introduction and we have to know the manufacturing process the ceramic tiles which are mostly seen placed on the floors and on the walls and also the vitrified tiles which are actually gradually replacing our stones we had elaborated on stones earlier so as i have told you these basic materials that is ceramic tile and vitrified tile all are made from major constituent is clay and sand so it is nothing different than what was made what brick was made of and even glass it is also made from sand silica so here here you see there are two basic points written that ceramic tiles are entirely made of clay and sand is there vitrified tiles are made from clay feldspar and quartz so this difference actually brings in a lot of difference in the two materials and these are finished materials as i told as you can see these are very familiar pictures i have brought in such familiar pictures to you as you see this is where wall tiles are used the dado of the washroom is made of of the urinals it is made of wall tile whereas here you see a floor tile this is placed on the floor you can also see lot of patterns on tiles yes they can also be made and here maybe you can see a larger size here you can see it is a bit smaller size but here it is very difficult to find out the line these are made of vitrified tiles so what do you understand basically these are smaller in size and here you can see they are almost invisible and they are larger in size so if we look into history we will see it is not a new item during the renaissance period italy had seen a lot of application of this the buildings over there during the renaissance here you see on the walls a lot of such tiles they were also called majolica tiles those were all put on wall surfaces floor surfaces for beautification and these what you see here were all hand painted and then on top of it a coating why we are studying under glass a coating or a glazing was applied if you remember when we studied 
terracotta. Either glass was grounded with the clay, grounded glass was mixed with the clay or else glass was put in the furnace. So, glass actually was fumes, fumed and the fumes were actually getting coated on top of terracotta giving it a kind of impervious coating. If you remember the term impervious, water absorption will be minimal. So, its long life will be assured. So, lots of such examples, historic examples are still there and it is seen that mostly during those days also it was either lead glazing or tin glazing. Tin glazing gave an opaque look whereas lead glazing gave a transparent look. Delft of Netherlands is also famous for its Delft ware. So, let us now come to the manufacturing process. How are they manufactured? How are they different from then making of a brick? Here you can understand that the raw materials are to be very fine and they have to be consolidated or compacted to a great extent. So, that porousness which was prevalent in the bricks which was allowing some kind of 15 to 20 percent absorption of water has to be prevented that would give it more density, more strength, more hardness and obviously the coating would give it further benefits. So, the basic material which is the clay or clay with other things which gives the vitrified tile, I am discussing vitrified tile together because the process of making is the same only the ingredients are different. So, as you see clay is the hydrous silicate of alumina gives plasticity and bonding and silica sand actually the, that decreases the unfired strength and the plasticity, but assists or to facilitate the escape of gases the fumes which happens which happens due to the due to the reactions when the process of process is on when it is in the furnace. It reduces shrinkage and increases the whiteness of the fired body. As you see two items are also bulleted in red, the feldspar that provides the glassy phase of the ceramic bodies and decreases the firing temperature and talc that is hydrated magnesium silicate which enhances the fluxing action of feldspar. These two are added to vitrified tiles. That makes the vitrified tiles more rigid, more strong and also they are giving getting a white color. Unlike clay tiles, clay ceramic tiles, clay tiles which are red in color. I will show you pictures later. This silica recrystallizes to form the glassy material. So, you have to heat it at a higher temperature so that the silica recrystallizes and gives the added qualities. It makes it frost resistant, chemical resistant, the dimensions do not change, there is no warpage, minimum warpage as we had seen the phenomena in clay. Now, coming to the manufacturing process which is particularly the stages of making it. The first point here is raw material batching. What does the word batching mean? Bringing in proportions of the items which are to be mixed together. So, measured amount of items are to be brought in in batches in e required amounts where they will be further mixed together. So, this is very important part because that gives the entire quality of the material. Next stage is you are going to put it in the ball mill for mixing. So, in the ball mill the entire batched items are mixed together 
before it goes for compaction. So, during the mixing process the all ingredients are mixed thoroughly so that you get a very uniform kind of mixture. Once that is done you are putting it into the molds where it is being pressed with the help of a hydraulic press which leads to compaction of the material. So, these tiles are compacted to the maximum possible. So, the ceramic tiles are compacted to a certain extent, vitrified tiles are further compacted by hydraulic press. So, I will give you the figures one is 300 MPa and the other is 350 to 400 MPa. So, these are required to make the thing more and more dense consolidated so that it gains strength. So, nothing is fired till now. These tiles are actually very thin also within 5 to 6 millimeters. Now, these are done in the shape of nozzle uh, in the shape in their shape by pressing it through these nozzles and on top of it the spraying is done the final coating. The entire thing is again put into the hydraulic press and as I told you the ceramic tiles get a pressure around 300 MPa whereas the vitrified tiles get the pressure of 350 to 400 MPa and the entire thing now goes for firing. Here you see it is written that the unfired strength is determined by the compaction whichever is achieved. So, compaction process is very important in the making of tiles that leaves it to be less and less of water absorbent. So, now is the firing process where these items these tiles unfired tiles are put into the roller clean where vitrification takes place and this gives the dimensional stability and dimensional stability and the vitreousness gradually in the firing process. The glaze whichever was the top layer fuses on the top surface of the clay body during the firing and these tiles are called glazed ceramic tiles. If you do not put the glazing on top of it that is when you are spraying if you do not spray the glazing on top of it it will remain unglazed. Yes ceramic tiles are of two types one is unglazed type one is glazed type. Glaze as you see it is written it refers to the coat of enamel or liquid glass that is applied to almost all the ceramic tiles. Now, again glaze can be matte, glaze can be uh, glaze can be glossy in finish. So, those are further details if you enter into the manufacturing process, but we are more interested in what are the types and how it is to be used or what are the uses of this particular thing. Let us come to the ceramic glaze which is the impervious layer or coating which is glass like and this gives the specific functionality. This layer is fused that is it is becoming you cannot separate it out it has mixed with the main body of the clay tile the compacted clay tile. So, this glazing will not come out you can put color as you remember the list of colors given in the glass you get same kind of coloring on top of it uniform one color. This also gives it the waterproofing of the item. So, this is going to give a single color glaze tile. Now, glaze has different functions as I told you glass was very non reactive to chemicals particularly acids. Here also these items develop such property. Other than that they have antibacterial property, antifungal property 
and that is why they are appropriate for hospitals. Operation theatres, they are applicable for interiors where like pathological laboratory, even the toilets, why the washrooms are having such tiles. Because if it would have been only a wall surface, it would have absorbed the different discharges from our, from our, from individuals using it. Whereas, this glass like finish will just not allow the, allow the biological item to be absorbed inside. So, you get these properties and you can abundantly use it for wherever you are trying to achieve these purposes. Now, you can see it may be tin glazed, it may be lead glazed, it may be double glazed, it may be fast firing glaze. So, various types of glazings are there, I am not going into details. But when you see a beautiful picture behind the glass as if it is fused, yes there are such methods, such templates which are actually giving such kind of patterns which was in earlier days done by hand and then after that the glass coating was being applied. So, those were handcrafted kind of thing, but now everything is mechanized. Other than as I told you, other than these glazed tiles, we also have the unglazed ceramic tile which is looking little dull, which you will see mostly in outdoors. But they are only getting the color from the minerals present in the clay. As you can see it is having a very natural color. So, natural pigments may be added to make it a little different. They are pressed on top of the surface and you can have only one layer of very thin layer of color of thin layer of such color on the top and they absorb liquid they do not react, they do not prevent the stains. So, you will get stains, you will see the float tiles are thin, but they are slip resistant because they do not have that glassy non-slip frictionless coating. They are slip resistant, so good for outdoor conditions where water can actually reach that but it do not leave the surface slippery. They can be polished also. So, you have polished unglazed ceramic tiles. So, if you enter into the market, you will see n number of things are there. So, how will you as an architect know what to use? It is the water absorption where you are using, where is the place where you are recommending it. That is very important. So, if you know where you are using it, whether that area is a dry area, then no need of thinking of water absorption. If it is a washroom, you have to think of water absorption. If lot of people are moving through it, you have to look into its strength. As you had seen in case of the, in the first picture, a set of urinals, on the wall it is there, no one is going to walk on it. So, it is a wall tile their compaction may not be to the extent what is in the float tile. So, all tiles are not the made in the same way, not all are facing the same kind of pressure. So, you have to choose knowing all these points. So, what is the basic difference between the vitrified tile and the glazed tile? Obviously, the materials first point then the vitrified tiles are always glossy, easy to clean, very slippery, whereas ceramic tiles you can have rough surface, you can have only top glazing. The vitrified tiles are stronger because of its composition and also the compactness. As I told you, the pressure applied is more, whereas the ceramic tiles may be little weaker. Fixing details, I will come to that. It is easier for vitrified tiles, maybe ceramic tiles are to be done little clear, little carefully because always again for the purpose of water absorption, vitrified tiles are resistant to scratches. 
they can be scratched obviously ceramic tiles are not that much resistant not all qualities but yes they can be scratched in some cases vitrified tiles are very low at water absorption you can see the value cost vitrified tiles gives higher takes higher cost and promises higher life aesthetically they are com almost looking like giving like marble or granite finish you can have such kind of patterns on top even nowadays but yes it is little artificial you can make out it is not a stone whereas ceramic tiles you can have a natural look the color gradually may go out of the ceramic tiles due to the ultraviolet rays which will not happen in case of vitrified tiles because the vitrification in the vitrification process it has happened from within in case of ceramic tiles the coating is only on the top vitrified tiles are also available in larger sizes as compared to that of ceramic tiles i i will give you a list of sizes also later now area of use and the condition of use of the tile is important as i told you wet or dry traffic condition what kind of people will be using think of a busy airport or a railway station you cannot allow people to sleep at the same time you have to give a rich look airports particularly and it has to be very sturdy people will walk with their luggages they will pull their luggages on top of it so it will face a lot of traffic so we have to be careful in picking up offices it is a very regular phenomena happening in the office building exposure to the hygrothermic stresses whether sun temperature change prolonged contact with water all these points you have to keep in mind while you are selecting so slip rating is there on the top of box group c group b group a so you can understand by seeing the clubbing group c will be for the water areas you see also the operation theater is there so nothing will stick to it group b it is sometimes getting wet group a it is hardly getting wet it is dry group c is all wet next is sometimes wet the last is mostly dry occasionally wet and again you will see another class class 1 and class 2 which is giving the dynamic coefficient of friction when someone is walking something is moving one is less than 0.4 another is more than 0.4 so one is class 1 one, one is class 2 so there are various classifications but you have to understand what is the purpose where you are recommending and then only you can choose from the items in the market or recommend someone from the market here are some spaces and characteristics given to you all so that you can go through and find out like in which kind of environment you would need which kind of tile say bathrooms laboratories where chemicals are involved you require stain and chemical resistant obviously slip resistant high amount of traffic such as hospitals shopping centers restaurants meeting halls you will see much hard mechanical strength high resistant to abrasion and slip is has to be high so that kind of flooring it will be desired for public areas you require heavy duty maybe vitrified tiles for busy areas you require vitrified tiles airports railway stations and also you see there is another bunch which is mild traffic not many people visiting will you go for such expensive items no you will go for maybe class 2 tiles here you see again another list is there where 
it is based on strength class 1 to class 5 class 5 goes for the airport subway supermarkets where lots of goods movement is happening along with human movement whereas class 1 tile as you see in the last year tiles for walls subject to little meta mechanical stresses compared to floor you will go for class 1 tile where the strength is quite low so after knowing all these you also need to know how to place the tile in position as you see in the pictures are very much illustrative as you can see some stellated base has been made on the wall also same thing is observed here also you can see it is a particular trowel with which they can make this kind of pattern so something is put there on top of which this tile is being fitted now i have taken picture of tile from behind what is behind the tile at the back of the tile this is a vitrified tile and at the back of the tile this is a ceramic tile they are having a kind of checkered ribs which will actually hold get into these slurry which has been put here so when it is fixed on the ground when it is fixed on the floor no one can take it out easily it should be in position but when it is the case of the wall you see it may fall off so adherence here is more important adherence in this case of wall is more important and adherence in this case of floor is not so important from the point of falling so here you see for floor tiles the mortar or the base which is little 1 is to 4 and sometimes some cement slurry is also directly used whereas for wall it is cement is much more which is 4 is to 1 and at times chemical adhesives are being used to keep it in position because if it falls it may hurt someone even another important point to note see the color of this is white color of this is red which you can see at the back at the cross section here you if you observe this tile is not red at the edge it is a vitrified tile here it is the vitrified tile which is white thoroughly it is white clay tile is red i mean clay when burnt red similar to brick so hope you understood the importance or the significance of fixing the tile how to fill in the gaps eventually there will be much number of gaps created through which water can go and actually loosen the tile so you have to seal it with white cement these items are actually spaced by means of spacers two to three millimeter spaces are there because to allow any kind of expansion otherwise it will lead to crack so every item has its particular or typical workmanship so tile sizes as i told you in the market there are so many types of sizes but what you take from this is the wall tiles are the smallest you see 8 cross 8 it may be even 4 cross 8 it may be 8 cross 12 but not more than that because there is a chance of falling whereas float tiles ceramic tiles in particular usually found in 1 feet by 1 feet that is 12 cross 12 inches or maybe 18 core cross 18 16 cross 16 inches but vitrified tiles are bigger joints are less it is minimum 2 feet by 2 feet that is 24 inch by 24 inch 600 cross 600 millimeter larger the tile lesser the joints but heavier they are so wall tiles are preferred to be smaller to avoid damage and falling off so we can conclude this 
module telling that tiles are a finished material unlike glass. When it has a glass like coating it is glazed, vitrified tiles are all glazed tiles, ceramic tiles are abundantly used due to their non reactive glassy layer and they are cheap. But yes vitrified tiles are replacing stones and they give a grand look, but yes the slip resistance, the ease of movement are to be considered, water, chemical actions all these things are to be considered, the kind of traffic is to be considered before we finish this lecture. Before we finish this module, I would again request you to look at your surroundings find out actually where you can see all the items which were discussed. Yes, many of the types you will see in your day to day places where you are either using going to institutes, going to at home itself or even going to a temple or going to a shopping mall where, where you can enter a restaurant and find out what kind of glass is there. You can have a gymnasium or a swimming pool area, you can see the use of tiles there. So, whenever you are moving to places try to train your eyes to find out what kind of material is this, what is the space and whether it is actually fitting that space or not. And maybe that will make you a more successful person in this particular domain. Thank you.